Coming up on the Modern Dealer Podcast, David and I are talking Google Ads, Gary Vaynerchuk and Wine Library TV, Men in Black, and how many cups per coffee should you drink in one day? All that and more on this week's episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast. Welcome in to episode 030 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. My name is David Farmer with Intice, and with me as always is David Bertoncini. How you doing, David? Good, man. It's just like, wow, we're at episode 030. So you think about this, this is 30 weeks in a row. 30. 30 weeks. So, you know, content creation is a marathon. It's not a sprint, man. I yep. mean, just doing this show is just constantly putting content out there week after week after week. You do uh, you do an amazing job, as I've always told you, um, on creating, help creating the show and editing and, and building it out. But it's all shot in one one take. We don't, yep. we don't, we no don't editing. No, no, no <coughs> real yep. editing that exactly. like, you know, we go back and we're like, oh, Start, we fucked up. And, and, mm-hmm. But we'll show a blooper. I, yeah. I love when I, I knocked down the yeah. Jenga a couple weeks ago and I was like, I was just clumsy as shit that yeah. day, and I just couldn't get my bearings. And yeah, but I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually uh, getting over a little bit of. I don't know if it is a cold or if it's just allergies. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice today, but I can feel it. You know, a throat is a little bit thick. Um, we've had a lot of crazy pollen down here. It was like mm. super hot last week. Today it was like 30. Uh, it was yeah, super cold this morning. It's going to be freezing. 50, 54. I mean, a high of 54 today, which yeah. is unlike Florida yeah. weather for us, man. We're used to 74, I mean, in the wintertime. Yeah, it's not like Minnesota right now where it's uh, negative 30 or negative 20. Mm. Super cold up there right now. So we can't complain too much at 30. <laughs> Although we could, <laughs> but anyways, yes. So uh, yeah, not doing too bad. Other than that, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get over this, whatever this is, and uh, you know, just kind of uh, keep on carrying on. Keep on chucking, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, one of the things you just mentioned about uh, creating the content um, that goes into any type of marketing. Um, you know, this is really an experiment for us, the Modern Dealer Podcast. Uh, now we've been doing it for thirty weeks. Continue to put content out there, and it's it's a hard thing. It's not easy, um, but you know, it's so enjoyable to be able to go through the process of thinking about how to make this better. Uh, we had a conversation before the the before flipping on the uh, flipping on the cameras this morning to try to make sure that we're really paying attention to uh, putting something out there that people want to listen to. So one of the things I would love is for our audience out there that's uh, that's watching the Modern Dealer podcast to leave some comments, good, bad, and different. You know, engage us in conversation. Um, you know, answer questions like, um, do you like watching the Modern Dealer podcast? What do you like about it? Um, what do you, what don't you like about it? If there's any topics that you would like us to discuss, please mm-hmm. let us know. We're always searching for additional things to talk about. New content and good, um, good topics and, and things of that nature. But, you know, it's funny is that, you know, in creating the podcast and just looking back 30 episodes and we did the, the year in recap, yep. you know, a couple of weeks ago and, you know, just episode one was like, okay, we're doing a podcast <laughs> and we're very robotic. And yep. we were both like, shit, we don't yeah. know what to do. What to expect. This is brand new for us. And, yep. but now the more you do it through repetition, the more we get comfortable, the more it's like chill, a little more laid yep. back. And it's like, Hey, you know, let us know, like David said in the comments, what do you want us to cover? I mean, what's, what is your pain point at your dealership? That's, you know, something that's flowing really well. You know, you might have a something strong you want to share with us so like hey I, i'm i'm using this google tip you know mm-hmm. analytic tip that we got from yep. us last week you know that's kicking ass and taking names or you know i'm falling on my face with these facebook events you know we just suck at them we hired such and such to do it and you know some fly by night vendor and you're pissed off i mean let us know let us yeah. you know talk to us man let us know what's what's bothering you we want to help out we want to help you know give you a a, a deep dive because 
you know, we've sat in your we've sat in your position before. We've been sales managers, salespeople, general sales managers, yep. general managers, we, we've finance managers. We've been in these positions yep. in the store, so we understand what it's like to operate the store now from like a vendor, you know, point of view, not a ten thousand foot ivory tower. We're gonna tell you, you know, oh, this is what you should do, but it's like, hey, let us make some suggestions from right. our experience and between Dave and I like got fucking fifty years experience in the yep. business. And it's, you know? a, it, and it's just a different point of view, too. Uh, maybe we've ran into a situation that you are just experiencing right now. Maybe it's something that we've uh, had an experience with, for example, with Google Ads. So that's, gonna, that's what our main topic today is going to be, is going to be five things um, that you need to be aware of in Google Ads. We're not going to do a huge deep dive and tell you everything that you need to be doing in Google Ads, but here's five things that you should be considering. And my perspective of how I want to be able to deliver this content is we know that you are busy doing what you're doing. You're managing people. You're hiring people. You're training people. You're making sure that the inventory is right. You're making sure that you had the right amount of customers coming into the dealership. You don't need to be an expert in Google Ads, but mm -mm. It, it's it is this modern dealer podcast can give you a platform to say, hey, I'm going to take a few minutes out. I'm going to learn a few things, and I'm going to talk to you know my provider uh, for Google Ads and kind of test them to make sure that we're getting our getting the right value out. Um, so I think I think that I think it's going to be a, a good main topic. But before we get into that, what are we drinking today, David? So I went back to an old. Uh, it's like going back to an old girlfriend, you know. Yeah. Going, it's going back to an old, old faithful, the old cow coffee because technically it's right around the corner from my house, literally on my yep. same block. I have Cala Coffee, several locations in Tampa Bay near you. <laughs> 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 they um, no, they, they they got really good coffee and uh, it's good atmosphere there. Mm -hmm. Wife brought it home to uh, to me and she said a coffee for your trip. But next week I'm going to double down on the uh, what was that coffee I was talking about? Bulletproof, Bulletproof. coffee, man. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to go double down on Bulletproof yeah. coffee next week because it's. I think it's still going to be. Is cold that the next name week. of the, the the place or is it the the name no, of the coffee? Black Crow Coffee. Black but Crow the, Coffee. The you know the the brew would be Bulletproof because okay. that's we in early episodes yeah. they add butter to it yeah. or some kind of fat that's supposed to give you a little more brain power. I don't know. We'll see how. How it's you know working maybe not so good for me yeah. sometimes maybe pretty good I don't know sometimes and I'm and quick and, and why next week bulletproof um, because it's gonna be on a Monday because okay. we have to shoot Monday because the following you know Tuesday I'm flying to Nashville for big old Click Funnels uh, Funnel Hacking 2020 which uh, we're gonna have a do a whole episode watch next week's episode to check out Funnel Hacking 2020 we're gonna be taking a deep dive into Click Funnels and what that entire thing is all about and how it can benefit your dealership right away. Cool. So I'm, I'm excited to hear it. I really don't know a lot about uh, ClickFunnels. I know it's something that you are uh, an advocate of. This is a big event that you go to. you got the little sticker right there, <laughs> Funnel Hacker. The old um, Funnel Hacker, yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the conceptually, I know exactly what it is, mm -hmm. um, but from, a, uh, from an infrastructure standpoint or a technology standpoint, I'm anxious to learn more. So uh, you're going to be going to the, the – is it, is, what, what's the event called? Uh, Funnel Hacking 2020. Okay. Um, and it's uh, Russell Brunson. He is the founder of ClickFunnels. I'll, I'll get into his origin story okay. next week because he's he's got a, a deep story. Uh, I'll, we'll cover that and get into a few things. But uh, I got a little origin story of my socks cool. today. I like that. I, <laughs> I want to hear it. I got to hear it. So almost like a Snoop Dogg, a little bow, wow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee. Okay. I've got the Chihuahua socks on. My okay. wife got me Chihuahua socks because... Uh, when she first met me, I was a single guy with two chihuahuas. Ooh. And she was like, this is really weird. It was a red flag. She says, this is yep. kind of a red flag. A guy in his 30s, single with two chihuahuas. Strange, but yep. uh, she found it. Well, she found fell in love with our dogs. And uh, and now I, uh, she got me uh, for Christmas the chihuahua socks. So got to sport the wow wows, the chihuahua wows, as my daughter calls them, her a wow wow. That's funny. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So uh, we, I mean, I, I, I've never had a Chihuahua, but we do have, <laughs> we, we used to have two pugs and both of them, unfortunately, are no longer with us. But um, yeah, I, I think people definitely kind of 
embrace a certain breed. I don't know if it's like a, a representation of themselves, but I mean, uh, you know, for some reason, I, I think pugs are just the absolute, absolute <laughs> coolest dogs there are. Uh, but I'm sure your chihuahuas are probably pretty cool too. <laughs> you know what it was? I bet you it would. Now, were you influenced in 1995 by Men in Black when course, that pug came out? Of course, out and, a little bit. We'll, Agent F. Yes. See? <laughs> he knew that off the top of his head. I mean, of course I did. No Googling required yeah. to know Agent F yeah. off the top of your brain. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to get into it, David. So we're, today our main topic is Google Ads. And um, like I said, I don't want to get too deep into it, but we're going to get a little bit of a history. I just pulled up uh, Wikipedia. So um, just to give a little bit of background, uh, Google, AdWord, Google Ads, which was previously known as Google AdWords, they've just recently rebranded themselves from AdWords to ads, uh, is an online advertising platform developed by Google's, where, uh, by Google, it's not plural, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where adver advertisers pay to display brief advertisements service offerings, product listings, video content, and generate mobile application installs with the Google Ad Network to web users. Um, just going back in a little bit of history, let's see if we can find this real quick. So uh, Google originally launched AdWords in uh, 2000. So God, I mean, it's only 20 years old now. I mean, it's, it's hard right. to even think about the world before Google and the world before Google Ads. Well, Gary Vaynerchuk talked about when wine, he bought in 2000, he had bought the word wine for like five cents. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, about two months went by, he owned the word wine for about 60 days. Yeah. And then uh, he had to go to Cabernet, you know, that for about 60 mm -hmm. days and then Merlot. And then he had to keep changing to stay ahead. Yeah. But I mean, that actually helped him literally 20 X his father's, you know, wine discount business. liquor store. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. his, his, that liquor store. Yep. Uh, up there in New Jersey. And, you know, he c consistently would talk about Google AdWords yep. back in 2000 when it first came out. Yep. Gary Vaynerchuk, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with him, which I'm sure most of you are, if you're not, I definitely would highly recommend searching him out, Gary V. Uh, he is an amazing speaker. He's a, an amazing entrepreneur, uh, CEO of uh, a, a, a large media company now. He, uh, Vander Fort, Media, Va thousand, Vander Media. Yep. over a thousand employees. He's on five continents. I Killing mean, he's, it. He's crushing yep. it, yep. as he would say, absolutely yep. crushing it. And he really started his his uh, his empire on YouTube. Yes, he's, he's one of the first long form YouTubers uh, yep. ever. Two thousand seven, he had Wine uh, Library yep, TV. Yeah, Wine Library TV. Yep. You, you could actually pull up episode zero zero one yeah. of Wine Library yeah. TV, and he just he said in the first twenty seconds that he was doing it, he wanted to make it like an. Um, what is that? Uh, home Shopping Network style. Uh, like he yeah, was going to do right. it like that. <clears throat> then he realized that wasn't the path he wanted to go down, and yeah. completely just went. The way on the he spot. went, yep, yep, on the spot. He yep. changed it when the first yep. 25 seconds, yep. building up to it, yep. it was going to be that style of a show. But then he's just like, no, man, I'm just yep. going to talk about wine and just how much he loves it. He wasn't trying to pitch. That, yes. was, just, that was the whole thing. Everybody's yep. trying to pitch something, but he's like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk about wine. Yeah. Yeah, and then he went on to. I mean, I, I'd want to make this a Gary V episode, but uh, yeah, he went we'll on to that be. for an episode, man. <laughs> yeah, when we, we get Gary we on the show, yeah. So I mean, we'll have to share this and hashtag Gary V. Yeah, <laughs> maybe D Rock maybe. might see yeah, it and be like, exactly. "All right, let's get these boys on." Yeah, That'd absolutely. Awesome. All right, so we will save that. So, but anyways, a lot, a lot of great content. If you're interested in, uh, uh, you know, utilizing social media to build your personal brand, to build uh, your business brand, I don't know if there's anybody better to really mimic. So ch check out uh, Gary V. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, 2000, um, that's when they first created that. It's hard to believe it's only been 20 years. 2005, Google launched the Google Advertising uh, Professional Program to certify individuals and companies who completed AdWords training and passed an exam. I've gone through the exam. I've been a, 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 a Google certified uh, provider. We are a, a Google AdWords partner. Is that actually kind of brings up a really interesting point. So uh, this is something that's extremely topical. Um, I just actually was made aware of this yesterday. One of the things that Google has done in, um, 
in uh, uh, v- very recently is they've changed how they are compensating agencies. So this is kind of thing a thing that most people don't really understand about the inner workings of Google agencies and resellers and how there are some bonus structures in place that only certain companies um, are able to uh, 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 able to get. But it really changes the entire dynamic. So. We, we could spend an hour just talking about this, but I, I'll, I'll try to kind of encapsulate this in like uh, one minute. So Google has a program to where some Google Premier partners, if they have a certain level of spend, can qualify to get a kickback or a bonus from Google. Mm-hmm. And it can be a <clears throat> substantial amount of money, especially when you start to really look at how much money dealers are spending in automotive pay-per-click advertising. So um, the, 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 that that kickback or that uh, bonus structure really creates um, an unlevel playing field if you're a Google AdWords provider that isn't participating in that bonus that's getting uh, kicked back because that can really you know pay for personnel, pay for your you know your infrastructure. Um, but anyways, there's companies out there that's built a business model getting by getting that uh, bonus structure. That bonus structure is going away now, which is going to level the playing field, sure. uh, and it's really going to bring a much higher quality mm-hmm. of service to dealers, in my opinion. So I think it's going to be very good. Timely that we're talking about uh, Google AdWords on this episode, and this uh, just reminded me of it. So you know what we're going to do, David? It is uh, 17 minutes on the Modern Dealer podcast clock. We're going to go ahead and jump into our first break, and we're going to come back and we're going to dive into five things that you need to know about Google Ads. And then we're also going to look at our uh, our Google Analytics insights. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to do Bert's three tips. But before we go for the break. Yep. Be sure, if you're new to the Modern Dealer Podcast, be sure to uh, like, share, and hit subscribe. And turn Turn on on notifications. notifications. Ding. Ding. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, make sure you you follow us on all platforms and uh, have a conversation with us. And uh, let us know uh, that you're brand new to the show and uh, we may send you some love. We'll we'll shout out to you coming up. Yeah, on on, on the uh, next episode. Love it. So anyways, yes, let's go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Shopping for a car should be rewarding, and our goal is to make it that way. Take a drive in a new or pre-owned vehicle, and we'll reward you with a special incentive. A complimentary Visa Reward Card. No purchase necessary. Your Visa Reward Card can be used everywhere Visa debit cards are accepted worldwide. To register, enter your name, phone number, and email address. Then just follow these simple steps. One, schedule a VIP express test drive or visit us at your convenience. Two, take a drive in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Three, meet with a sales manager to validate your visit. You'll receive an authorization email confirming your address and your Visa reward card will be delivered within seven to 10 days. That's it, it's that easy. Take a drive and get a reward. Welcome back in to episode 030 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. Today, we're talking about Google Ads and five things you need to know. Um, You know what? I feel that we're going into the second segment now. I feel like I'm just very sluggish today. I don't know if it's coming across that way on the the podcast or not. And uh, as we are uh, going through the break, I I think I kind of realized that I haven't had as much coffee as I normally do. So, you know, we have this weird little coffee thing that we talk about, and it's just like basically the same shit every single day. Uh, But, you know, coffee is something that is very important to me. You know, it's like, I, I mean, I... I probably drink 12 to 15 cups a day, right. probably. 
Um, it's something I just oh. can drink all day long. Um, so, anyways, uh, that's and a lot I think of that's coffee, David. it is, but it's you, been that way forever. You, you better set the uh, <laughs> the heart attack sensor on your no, on your watch coffee, just to make sure that coffee's good for you. Your it's body, good for you. It is good for you. It is. There's no negative. But everything in moderation. Yeah. So, True. If fifteen cups that might be but exceeding the moderation. It might be, but usually I probably only ounce. drink half a cup. And it'll go cold, and I'll get a fresh cup. All right. Yeah. So then we're down to eight. Yeah. So probably probably more like eight. All but right. anyways. It's still a lot, though. So it's still a lot. But I, but I do love my coffee, and I think that's why I feel like I'm a little bit sluggish. Also, another reason I feel like I'm sluggish, and this might be something that you can shed, shed some light on. So I had I went out to lunch. I had a business lunch today, which mm-hmm. normally I don't do. I don't, I don't go out and schmooze or go out and do business lunches uh, all that often. I think I kind of learned that in retail where it was weird if you left the dealership and went out to lunch. Right. I mean, you kind of had to stay, especially as a sales manager. You didn't leave and go out and have lunch. And if you do that as a sales manager, you had more power to you. Just like when, but when we were growing up in the business, we didn't do it. <laughs> That's because you work at a country club store. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. maybe a luxury store. No, yeah. I'm not going to bust balls in some luxury brands. Yeah. And you may have the opportunity to go, oh, we're going to go to lunch today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, I, it's, it's, so it's like for me, I would rather just work through and power through lunch and not eat. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like, it's almost like a mini fast. I do eat breakfast, which I used to not, I used, I used, I used to not eat breakfast and I just go all the way through and basically have one meal a day oh and boy. some snacks, which is not good. So I do eat, I, I do eat a good breakfast in the morning, but I usually don't eat during the day. So it's kind of like a, a mini fast, right? Mm-hmm. From between breakfast and dinner. And this idea of, so anyways, I did go out to lunch today, which I think just the food has made me feel like slow, slow yeah, and sluggish man. and tired. It, um, it kicked in now. Uh, what is that in the turkey? The trip, the yeah. tryptonite, tryptonite, whatever it is. The or something. Yeah, yeah. That makes you tired after you, you yeah. stuff yourself for And I did eat Thanksgiving. chicken, so maybe it's. See, there you go. <laughs> feel. So what was so I was thinking is I think that made me sluggish, but um, I know something that's becoming really popular right now, and, and I'm seeing it more and more, is this intermittent fasting. And I think you even mentioned that a, a few weeks ago. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that. A little Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. um, I will uh, start eating at noon and just do eight hours of eating. So from noon to about 8 p.m. is when I try to stop eating. Yeah. But you know, taking that 16 hours off allows your body to, you know, digest and actually takes the most energy in your body. Yeah. Um, you know, you may think working out or something like that, but but digestion is actually a big a, part, a big energy consumer. So yeah. like you said, you're feeling sluggish is because your body's exerting all this energy and blood to yeah. your digestive tract to break down that uh, carbohydrate uh, filled lunch you probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, you had chicken what did you have chicken oh, what I mean, chicken burger no no I just had chicken fingers chicken oh. ten, chicken tenders and uh, fries? fries a few there fries. You go. there's the carbs yeah, exactly that's what got you yeah, yeah. <laughs> which usually I do pretty good um, I, I don't I don't eat badly very often I think I eat pretty well, pretty lean. Uh, not great, but uh, pr- pr- pretty lean. At least as I get older, I think it becomes more and more important to make sure you know what you're, you know, you're consuming yeah, there. Yeah. You know, I, I want to live, I don't know if you knew this about me or not, but I want to live until 112, 112. 112. Man. Yeah. 112 is when I want to make it to. I mean, people that'll are be, doing it. Yeah. You know, be, people uh, are living that long. 2082. Yep, 2082. You're exactly right. So that's be, my goal. January, a, my my birthday. 2082. 2082. <laughs> I mean, it's specific. <laughs> I know it's fucking weird. I know, <laughs> but it's the truth. It's it's been that way for a long time. So I, I, I want to be on this planet for a long fucking time. I figure both. I figure 112 is probably pushing. You know, it's pushing as far as I can. I think that's uh, about the the limits. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what tech, I mean, people are living longer, man. So it's it's a very yeah. it's a very feasible yeah. goal. I think the first person to live until 150 years old is alive today. Wow. I personally, I, that's what I personally believe. That's strong. I mean, the medical uh, advances mm-hmm. that, we, that we've made in the last 50 years um, and, you know, just medication, how we're able to e- eradicate uh, so many of the, the different diseases and cancers and we can treat them. We can, you know, we can cure cancer in many cases. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, so that, that's what I believe. But... 
we digress. Get back to Google Ads. <laughs> 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 so anyways, intermittent fasting, if you want to learn more, just uh, email David Bertoncini. He'd be more than happy to uh, educate you on uh, intermittent fasting. If you want to know more about uh, how, to, how, to drink, how to drink and survive on 12 cups of coffee a day, be more than happy to share my experience with that. Or you can just Google it as we're talking about Google AdWords on... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is a safe amount of coffee? Google that. And then yeah. also, <laughs> what is the... Uh, based upon your size and your weight, yeah. it's a little over six foot and yep. about 175, 180 pounds. Yeah, pretty close, yep. about 170. Yep, so about 170 yep. pounds. So we'll Google yep. and find out exactly what the <laughs> adequate amount for his, his body mass size yeah. would be. And of yep. course, uh, you know, check your intermittent fasting on Google. So. Yep. On the uh, <clears throat> so onward. five things that we want to talk about Google Ads. So I again I, I don't want this uh, Modern Dealer podcast ever to be a how to uh, uh, podcast. I really want it to be more about uh, conversation and some insights. So today we're going to be talking about maximize conversions. So as Entice, our company, we do provide pay per click advertising solutions to dealers. One of the things that we've adopted about a year ago was the maximize conversion bidding strategy and I can't recommend this enough it is amazing what we've been able to do for our dealers uh, to be able to drive down the cost per click and I'm talking you know five six dollars CP uh, CPC down to about two dollars CPC in a very competitive market so that's what I would recommend is look at your cost per click with your provider and ask them the question, um, what are you doing to, uh, or uh, you ask them the question, are you using the maximize conversion bidding strategy? So tell me, David, what is the maximize conversions uh, bidding strategy? So maximize conversions automatically sets bids to help the most conversions for your campaign while spending your budget. Uh, it uses advanced machine learning to automatically optimize bids and offers auction time bidding capabilities that tailor bids for each and every auction. Um, that pretty much and that's pretty much how it, it works. <clears throat> so it really is leveraging um, machine learning and some specific algorithms inherent to the Google Ads platform. So I was talking earlier about a lot of companies not being able to participate in that kickback program with Google. I probably shouldn't call it kickback, we'll call it a bonus program. Um, but there's a lot of companies out there that provide some sort of bidding strategy technology. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, it has been good in the past. I personally have never believed that a, a, a third party technology from a bidding strategy is the right way to go. But as soon as Google came out with their own um, that th that I uh, believed in, we tested it. We did A/B testing with an, you know with it and without it, and really uh, it really is absolutely phenomenal. The results you can get. Um, we'll provide additional information in our uh, in our show notes about this. But look at your CPC. Ask your uh, search. Uh, your your, your pay-per-click search provider if you are using the maximize converting bidding strategy. If you aren't, you should highly, uh, I, I highly recommend that you uh, look at it. So that's one. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> we're moving into two. So we're going to move right into two. Uh, and these are all fairly new, uh, new pieces of technology that's available in Google Ads. The next one is responsive ads. And Google is, uh, Google Ads, they've been, uh, they've had this as a, a beta test for, I want to say, a couple years now. Recently, they've launched this out as just a, a, a feature that's available in everybody's Google Ads account, but it's pretty cool. Um, so previously in Google, uh, in Google Ads, in Google AdWords, you would build an ad. You would, you would have to build a subject line. You would have to build a description. You would have to build the landing page URL. And you had some customization features on it, but the ad that you wrote is the ad that you would use. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about the responsive ads, now you have the ability right within the system to create some flexibility. And the flexibility you can do is you can have two title lines 
you can have uh, m- and you can have multiple title lines. So th- think about a Google Ads when you look at it, right? You have the, what, what's in blue, it's bolded mm-hmm. uh, at the top. That's the title, and then you have the description, which is more of the content-based stuff. So the, with the responsive ads, you can you can build out like ten different versions of the header, ten different versions of the description and then uh, different landing pages. And what Google will do is it, it, it'll take these different combinations and put them together, and it'll automatically test them out. Mm-hmm. And as they test them out, they'll find out which combination works the best. Right. Um, and it'll do some uh, you know, <clears throat> automatic A-B testing, um, which is something that takes a lot of time and effort to do if you're going to be doing it yourself. They yeah. kind of built it right into this responsive uh, platform. Um, so I'll just read this, uh, this, this quick uh, paragraph to kind of explain how they explain it. So create flexible ads that adopt to device widths, giving you more room to share your message with potential customers, save time by providing multiple headlines and description options, then let Google Ads show the most relevant combinations of your ads to your customers. So another thing you want to check out, if you have access to your Google Ads platform, see if your provider is building out responsive ads. If they aren't, ask them why not. I mean, this is something that uh, Google really wants you to move to because it provides a much better experience to that Google user. In, 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 in Google's mind, that is the most important thing is, is how Google Ads are uh, being presented to that end user. That is a lot. That is a lot. That is, <clears throat> yep. But I mean, the good news is, is when you have those different um, headlines, the uh, like, the, like you said, it's going to take bits and pieces of everything because people are going to be searching in different ways. Like, uh, I was trying to figure out this yesterday morning on my watch. I'm like, why is my um, Apple Watch battery draining? And it's like, how did I word the question? Yeah. You know, why is my Apple Watch draining? Apple Watch drain battery. Yeah. I mean, maybe with the different ways that I was trying to search to get the same information, um, you know, when you write ads like this, that would bring up an advertisement for, you know, a repair or, yep. or a sure. repair place or something mm-hmm. like that. So I guess with that many different headlines, you know, make sure that, you, that you've had your yeah. ads written in multiple different formats. Yeah, so. and you know what? This, this kind of brings up another uh, another great topic is the importance of Google Ads. So, are you a dealer that is in the camp of I need to be on Google and I need to be doing Google Ads, or are you in the camp that you think that Google Ads are useless and you don't invest any money? I would love to get your feedback in our comments below if you like Google Ads or if you don't like Google Ads. I am a proponent of utilizing Google Ads, and I think mm-hmm. every dealership should be doing it. But it doesn't. It, it. But also, it is the amount of money that you're investing in it. I think is very important. We've uh, worked with dealerships where we've spent fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollars per month in Google Ads. Uh, in previous months, years back now, and we've been able to drive that down uh, by optimizing the campaign to get that much lower. So where you're at, your big dealership, are you spending 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand? Uh, So, I mean, but are you there? When somebody's thinking about it, you need to be there. And I think that's what... uh, you mentioned on the break earlier about getting a dealer's cost down by like 66%. Is it mm-hmm. that strategy with the... Um, maximize conversions bidding strategy. Maximize conversions bidding strategy. Okay, so that, that goal goes back to that. Okay. That was, yeah, I was so I mean, wondering, if you think about it, we were at 5 or $6 uh, cost per click, and we had a dealership that was spending fifty, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 per month to get X amount of traffic to their website. So by driving down the cost per click from five and six dollars down to like two dollars, we can take that from fifty to sixty thousand to twenty thousand without the dealership losing any traffic going to the site hmm. by making sure that you have a very optimized campaign. Um, so these metrics matter. Yeah. You know, especially when you're looking at dealerships that are spending a ton of money in Google Ads. Uh, in some cases, it can be 
50% or more of the entire digital marketing ad spend. Um, and, you know, I talked about going to five. I know we're already 15 minutes into the second segment, so we're not going to get through all five, which is kind of what I planned on. But I think it was a, it's a good way to uh, start the conversation around Google Ads and the importance of Google Ads and the importance of holding your uh, Google Ads provider accountable. So this spreadsheet or this uh, slideshow will be in the show notes. Um, uh, the the, the, uh, the the couple other things that I was going to include in my five are gallery ads, which are swipeable image-based ad units that appear at the top of search results. They're really fucking cool. If you're not using them, find out why not. Another, another piece is affinity audiences. Um, we're going to leave that to another, uh, a, 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 another episode, but those are really cool. You should be util utilizing those uh, in your search campaign. And then the final thing is uh, Google has this uh, really cool thing called the bumper machine where you can take your, uh, your TV spot, run it through the bumper machine, and it'll give you multiple six-second ads that you can play as bumpers uh, in YouTube. So really cool stuff. Um, but uh, uh, that is the five. We'll go in a little bit deeper on some of those other things. Uh, but again, I we'd love to have your feedback about what you're doing with Google Ads, how much you're investing. Is it, do, you, do you think it's fucking worthless and you should be spending any money there or do you think you should be spending some? I'd love to find out. I would say if, if you and I were running a store today, um, your it's like having an inventory mix, obviously your mix of advertising Yep. and to have, I mean, a dedicated amount mm -hmm. would make sense that you would dedicate, okay, we're going to spend this much on Google ads. We're going to spend this much yeah. on Facebook ads. We're going to spend this much on your, you know, mostly focusing on digital platforms because well, so I, I think, yeah. I think that brings up a great conversation point. And if I was running a store right now, I would be 100% digital. I would be spending zero money in traditional. I would be doing no traditional TV, traditional cable, traditional print billboards. Um, I would be doing 100% uh, uh, digital. What about a bus stop? I mean, wouldn't you want, I mean, every time <laughs> I drive past the same bus stop on US 19 in Clearwater, mm -hmm. uh, I still see an advertisement for an auto dealer there. I'm not going to say which dealer. Right. I'm going to get them free advertisement, but yep. they're paying for a bus stop. Yeah. Which I don't think this makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> I don't either. So, yeah, I mean, I would definitely be going 100 percent all digital. I would be looking at how can you segment that uh, that budget between Google ads, between display, between video. Uh, there's some really cool things happening right now in connected TV that you can place directly through the Google marketing platform. Um, it's really cool stuff where you can actually track who's seeing the ads and you can create some really cool attribution. Uh, Facebook social media marketing platforms have, they've really grown up over the, over the last five to six years. Um, some really cool uh, uh, reporting attribution where you can upload your customer, uh, your customers that you sold cars and it'll match it to you, uh, to Facebook and Instagram users. And it'll show how many of those customers actually saw your ad. So really cool stuff. But so to, 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 to kind of go into that a little bit, that's what I, I'd be doing if I was running a store right now. I do like that, you know, you had mentioned you wouldn't do traditional TV, radio, mm -hmm. newspaper, uh, all the traditional stuff because everything's been re replaced. Yep. You know, the yeah. TV is now YouTube. Uh, the radio yep. is podcast. Yep. The, you know, so uh, this is, as we said, the remote control to our lives. Mm -hmm. Everything happens here. Yep. And uh, people, so many people said, I'd rather lose my wallet than lose my phone because yeah. this is so important. But the, um, what you mentioned about uh, connected TV, to me, I am so wowed by the whole connected TV yeah. advertisement platform that maybe we can get into a little bit more on another episode, but you know, just a, a brief, you know, 5,000 foot overview of connected TV from my understanding is that you could create an advertisement, mm -hmm. you can run it if somebody's on Hulu, if somebody's on Sling, YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. um, you Even know. apps like CNN Go or, you know, other Fox Go or whatever, uh, the, 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 the different digital platforms that, that you can serve videos to, they're getting those videos from someplace. A lot of times they're getting them from the YouTube platform. Which... 
from mm-hmm. Google. Yeah. So this all relates back to exactly. Google ads, which yeah. you know, we were talking about here on this episode is the Google advertisement. And, and to me, uh, I, I'm just, just awed by the entire connected yeah. TV platform. I'm just like, wow, to me, I think that is the coolest thing because nobody, I mean, it's very few and far between. You ask somebody that, you know, Hey, do you have cable? And they're just yeah. like, people are moving well, away you know, from that yeah. traditional, you know, Oh, we got to yeah. have cable and, and we're moving towards just having an internet connection and getting what you want, you know, you know, piece if you want yeah. HBO on the go, if you want, um, you know, well, it's, you know, we've talked about this a lot on the modern digital podcast and that is people are willing to pay for convenience. Mm-hmm. I think that goes right along with the convenience of watching the TV you want to watch when you want to watch it. Gary Vaynerchuk has been talking about this for 10 years about, you know, what's happening in the in the advertising world when it comes to uh, TV, you know, HBO Go or Netflix or all these other, mm-hmm. uh, you know, apps where people can consume the content that they want to when they want to. It's not like us when we were fucking, you know, watching TV when we were kids, we had to ch- turn the channel before they even had remote control, mm-hmm. right? We had to turn the channel oh, and click, 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 yeah, UHF. And, and make sure you have, yeah, the UHF. UHF for the two uh, clickers. Yep, exactly. The so, cable box with yeah, the clicker was yeah, the coolest thing, I know, man. right? That's a yeah. old vintage finding one of those cable boxes. Yeah. <laughs> you stick the little card yeah. in. You stick your, your credit card in. <laughs> yeah. You get the yeah, yeah. channels you yeah. weren't supposed to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get 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 the button like just uh, moved over a certain way. Yeah, that's funny stuff. So, anyways, so we're uh, 22 minutes in the second segment of the Modern Dealer Podcast. We're going to go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. So, one of the 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 uh, the new segment that we have uh, put in the Modern Dealer Podcast this year is uh, Google Analytics Insights 2020. And on this week's uh, segment, we're talking about content grouping. And again, this is not a how-to, uh, although we are going to include additional information in the slideshow in the show notes if you want to learn more. Uh, but in Google Analytics, you do have the ability to group um logical structures within your website to make sure that the insights that you're gaining from Google Analytics is something that you can act on. So within a automobile uh, dealership website, what's the most important is your search results page and your vehicle detail page. And you're going to have multiple search results pages and vehicle detail pages on your dealership's website. And if you're looking at Google Analytics, unless you're able to group those pages together, it's really hard to identify, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, patterns, right? or intent of what the customer is looking for. So what you can do in one example of using uh, content grouping is to, to group all your search result pages and all of your vehicle display pages. So when you look at the reporting, you can say, okay, now this customer came to the website, went to a search results page, went to VDP, and then converted. Or maybe there's a different, a different conversion <laughs> funnel you can look at and say, okay, What is most important is a customer that came to the home page, went to a search results page, went to a VDP, went back to a search results page, went to a VDP, and maybe that grouping of of, uh, activity was uh, was where most of your customers ultimately converted into a lead. So now you can Mm. really optimize your website to make sure customers are be, be able to bounce back and forth. So all of that is available because you're utilizing content grouping. So content grouping lets you group content into logical structure that reflects how you think about your site or app and then view and compare aggregated metrics by group name in addition to being able to drill down into the individual URL, page title, or screen name. So. Analytics Insights 2020 for episode 030, Content Grouping, which moves us into Bert's three <laughs> tips. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> so I picked this up, obviously, from uh, Mr. Farmer there, you know, with the um, getting back to our uh, Google ads and uh, checking with your, your, your marketing agency to find out what you're spending. Are you spending the, the max uh, the max spend strategy, which mm-hmm. you explained that that's maximize conversion, maximize conversion, bidding so, strategy. Yep. Yep. Bidding threat strategy, which has drove down the cost for uh, a lot of your stores that you deal with. So that's, yep. that's uh, number one. Uh, I like the gallery ads because it's, 
for the consumer, consumers our program now just to kind of swipe right, depending on what you're on. <laughs> or left, right? Swipe left to right. But it gives them the opportunity yep. to actually look at a, a gallery of different images that you're putting out there. Should be your inventory ads, which would yep. be in a gallery ad yep. format, which uh, would help tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, uh, I like the segmentation of, as we had talked about if we were running a store of your digital ad spend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're going to get into a whole other episode, but, you know, connect to TV, that is, I think yeah. to me, that's like the new secret sauce. Yeah. And what really, what I would do too, is I would start to look at all of your digital, uh, all of your advertising spend kind of in the pie chart and then kind of compare month to month. I think that's a right. great visual. I'm a very visual person, a very visual learner. And if I'm saying, okay, you know, 65% of my total advertising budget is going to digital and 35% is going to traditional. And out of that 65% that's going to digital, you know, 35% is going to paid search, 10% mm. is going to auto trader or other third party right. cars.com, et cetera. I think, and then just look at that each month, right? how it, how, well, how it changes. So that other 35% of the original pie of your total yes. ad spend, you need to just eliminate to, to all digital, which yeah. really makes yeah. sense. Cause yeah. I, I don't, uh, the, awareness of your ad uh, uh, as I still see attorneys here in the Tampa Bay area which are advertising on an entire bus yeah the whole bus is wrapped and I, I know how much it is to wrap a car I mean it's like two thousand dollars oh wrap yeah a car. it's very how expensive. much was it to wrap yeah. that bus <laughs> I'm like wow Dude, yeah. you guys are spending a ton, but it's yeah. awareness. Yeah. Uh, maybe awareness that may not be necessary. Just run a good digital ad yeah. and you can yeah. skip the bus. Yeah, people aren't looking at the side of the bus. They're looking R at their phones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Even while they're driving, they're looking at their phones. It's crazy, It man. is it's crazy. Scary. It is a scary world out there with people staring at their phones. But yeah. on that tip. On that note, that's it for 030. Unless you got anything else. It's in the books, but, uh, you know, just to kind of go back to one thing last week, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Phil Lair yes, that was on our show absolutely. last thank week. You, that uh, took, Appreciate his, it. took his lunch break to yeah. uh, spend some time with us. And uh, I know you're a, um, a, um, a loyal fan to the Modern Dealer podcast. So I just want to thank you personally thank you again for, that. for being on and hanging out with us and uh, giving us some fixed operations insights and some culture changes that hopefully you could have used. And if you didn't see episode 029, go back and check that out there on our page and uh, you'll see, check it out and see what uh, Mr. Lyric had to say about his operations and how he runs his dealership. But other than that, in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I've got to say about that. For David and David, that's a wrap. David.